our number one guy, uh, Nicobe Dean out of Georgia. And I have a little stat yep. thing, which you could probably correct because I'm typically off by a couple tackles. Well, I think but... since the season started, they're stopped. <clears throat> uh, Nick, what are you talking about? Oh, mm-hmm. like since this, yeah, it might have been updated yeah. uh, from what I, yeah. Uh, but for, I don't know, from what I hear or what I have here, uh, Nicobe Dean out of Georgia, linebacker, is the number one prospected linebacker coming out. Um, played three years. Uh, he's entering the draft as junior uh, and, you know, 89 solo tackles, 79 assists, total of 168, and 13.5 tackles for loss, 7.5 sacks in just three years, which is pretty good. Uh, for college, um, I would say if you hit close to 10, that's not too bad. And then uh, two interceptions and, uh, yeah, and a well, touchdown. Yeah, most, most school records are like 12, so. Yeah, once you get near 10. So you 10 know. is pretty pretty good for one year, especially when he <laughs> plays true linebacker. But yeah, and this guy's uh, 7.5, so 7.5. So, yeah. so uh, pretty close to 10. Not too bad. But uh, I he, when we watched that 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 championship game, I he dude he was flying everywhere. So uh, I, I I don't know what you saw or what anything you felt differently or that you wanted to say about him. No, oh, really. I just I like his uh like like his uh, leadership. Like you could tell he was leading that defense. Mm-hmm. Like he you could see him pulling. Like did you see the one play? Where they like, I think they gave up a touchdown, and he pulled the player aside and was like, "No, you can't be doing that." No, I didn't see that. And directing him, and then like the rest of the game, that player was like unstoppable. Like they ran the exact same play to that guy, he stopped it the next time, and then you just see him run over there and like high five him, going like, "Yeah, that's how you do it." Like he was just doing stuff like that that I was like, "I think he's gonna have a future in the NFL." <laughs> oh, uh, I think so too. Um very very athletic guy um i mean he's he's six foot 225 pounds and uh i, I don't know if you you have anything different uh, uh but as we get i closer, think it was six yeah six foot 225 yeah so uh he's supposed to go 13th off the board overall like 13th pick mm. in the first round so um and i see him i don't know what you have but uh i see him here with uh, going to Cleveland. I know you go through CBS or what do you use? You use something else. CSP oh, something. I haven't seen mock drafts. I just saw that. I don't have it anymore. I could look it up real quick, but it was just the the, the rankings of the the players. Mm, okay. Okay. No, as as of now, I I see him going here. Uh, well, I use a tankathon, and it's it's thirteenth uh, to Cleveland. So. I, if if him in Cleveland, if that if that happens, man, uh, oh, Jesus, uh, Jeremiah Usukoromora, in him they have him eleven. Wow. Okay, and they're, they're going anywhere? Not not a team, or just kind of just the overall. It's level. just the rankings for that I looked at. <clears throat> I mean, this guy could be just as good as Micah Parsons. I mean, that's that's I, how I, I kind of see that. He's I can very see good. it, but I. I think from what I saw, at least in the championship game and the semifinals, uh, he plays more middle linebacker. Yeah, rather than the outside. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, you could still easily be be that guy. So, I mean, I, I regardless of the fact, though, I mean, he's still a leader. He's still good. I um, mean, it's still early, but well, from what I saw in that championship game, he gave me like uh, Ray Lewis-esque vibes. Okay, see, now that's... That's high. See, I've been I've been kind of comparing, but, it, but it's the way he was like helping his other teammates be better and like teaching them like while the game was going. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, that's something I feel like Ray Lewis would do. Like okay. if instead of like yelling at him and getting mad that he gave up a play, he would go up to him and be like, "No, this is what we need to do." And then you see later on in the game when it goes back to that player, and he stops him, and you're like, "Well, imagine if he hadn't said anything, probably would have been the same result," you know. Yeah, yeah. Or if yeah. you or if you just yell at the guy, he'll probably be discouraged even more and be even less productive. Right. I mean, it, I mean, it, you know, I'm looking at at what he does, and and he just everything you've you've said. Um, you know, he's he's obviously the number one for a reason. You know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, this this guy knows how to. He's everywhere though. I mean, he's he's reads the the running backs. He reads the QB. Yeah, he read the flat in that play. Yeah, like I mean, I'm pretty sure you could put him on a DB. I think there he is a good See, look at that. Just. Oof. He's just everywhere. And this guy reminds me of Micah Parsons. And I've been comparing Micah Parsons to the next Ray Lewis, but or you know, Luke Keekley. But you just said, you know, in the Kobe Dean, Ray Lewis. That's well, I think because of the where they play. Mm -hmm. Like you just saying, like from from being I think Micah Parsons could be the next Von Miller. <laughs> I don't know about that. The way, uh, like prime Von stat. Miller. How many? How many stats? How many sacks did Von Miller have in his rookie year? I don't. I Not as many remember. as Mika Parsons. I think Mika Parsons just set the record. <laughs> yeah, no, that this Mika's pretty freaking good. So that's I what like, I'm saying. I, I I think he plays that outside linebacker. You know, he can do, but I think he's ooh. better at coverage and like playing out than Von Miller would ever be. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think is scary about Mika Parsons. All right. And then seeing seeing uh you know Nicobe Dean, this guy's got speed. Man. Yeah, look at this hit. Are you gonna tell me it doesn't look like Ray Lewis esque hit right there? I guess, but <laughs> I mean it's it's still early. I, I'm I'm gonna see how he does. That guy's like, I'm gonna drop the ball because I don't want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that running back just did. I want to see what he does in the NFL first before I start comparing this guy to Ray Lewis. There's, I said it's a little early, but from what I've seen. And his like, but like I said, I just his leadership is something I don't you don't really see very often, I think, in the college level. Mm -hmm. Oh, we let that one slip. Oh, look at that, just that just, play right there. God. Freaking, uh, I forgot the that guy from uh, Clemson. The the that guy, I can't remember who the hell that was, but there was somewhere I was reading where he's never been sacked before, and until he met. Uh, Nakobe Dean, and it it kind of changed the way his perspective of playing QB. I guess like when they played Clemson a few times. Look at that. he just busted through two blockers to get to the ball carrier right there. He's got That's speed and he, and he runs. He or he's got speed and he can read very well. So you know, I I like what I see out of uh, Nakobe. So, Me too. Um, definitely, definitely number one linebacker coming out. Um, and I'm 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 excited for whoever picks him up, you know, because I think when the way I I read uh, Mika Parsons last season, I think this guy's going to be pretty damn close too. So, uh, but well, again, I don't know spots. if he's going to have the I don't know if he's going to have the sacks like Mika Parsons had because, like I said, he plays middle linebacker. Yeah, so but, yeah, he but again he, he depending... blitzed every once in a while, but he'll be mostly you know protecting the middle of the field. Watching running backs play, I, I think playing the run though, he's going to be a big time. Like his tackles for losses will be through the roof, I think. Yeah, but it also depends on where he lands too, though. Because if he lands somewhere where they have like a gang load of linebackers who are already decent, but I can't really think of a team where a <laughs> screw tie... a quarterback. I want the I want Washington. I want the the Commanders to draft him. Well. That's going to be our new team, in case you didn't know. The Commanders? <laughs> Washington Commanders. Is that, like, for reals official? Uh, I'm pretty sure. It, it'll, it'll be official on 2 2 but. It, I, it, I don't know. Like, we is, can't, this, we, is this we, worthy? We, we can't, we can't do anything right. The Commanders? So, you think we'd be able to keep a first down news, though? Maybe. The Commanders? Yeah, Washington Commanders. That's what we're going to be. <laughs> you heard it here. Not first, because it's been out in the world for a while now. But. <laughs> well, I've been gone out of the world for a while. <laughs> they announced that they were coming out with 2-2-22. Okay. And they've done a horrible job of keeping things secret. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the leaks, Stuff leaks out, man. All right, so that's N'Kobe Dean, number one linebacker. Definitely, uh, I'm excited to see what he does. Um, our I next think if guy, you put him on Washington, we'll have an elite defense. That's the one thing I think we were missing. And I know we have Jamin Davis, but he plays yeah, outside would, linebacker. So if you team Jamin Davis with N'Kobe Dean, oh. And then Ooh. don't forget about Holcomb, though. That's what I said. And you have Holcomb on the other side? Well, you, said, you said Jamin Davis. Well, I know a lot of times we, we like to run a nickel package, which only mm -hmm. leaves two linebackers. Yeah. So I think you'll have 
Dean in there, and then I think Holcomb and Davis will switch off the other linebacker spot. Okay. But you add them to our four up front guys and then our safeties, which uh, hopefully we keep Bobby McCain because that guy was ridiculously good. Yeah, he was. And a so, very good, good, you know, s- splash in the pan for you guys because that was yeah. that was awesome for you guys because uh came out of nowhere. Yeah, he helped definitely out, helped so. solidify the secondary. Yeah. And then we got to uh, figure out what we're doing with uh, Collins too. But overall, no you add him to that defense, I think it'd be a pretty scary defense. He's on his last year, isn't he? Collins? Yeah. That's why I said we got to figure out what we're doing with him. Yeah. They compared him. He actually had better numbers over the, this past season than Jamal Adams. So, really? <laughs> yeah. So they're like, well, Jamal Adams was gone for a while. Though. So was Collins. They were gone the same amount of time, they missed the same amount of games. Yeah, Diggs showed up in Seattle a lot for him though, so I feel like they changed yeah. up things. So, but anyways, that's I mean that's it. We'll see how that 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 goes. I mean the uh, freaking the combine, the what I call the Olympics are about to open up. So, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll, definitely we'll throw a trade for for uh, Russell. We'll get him in there. <laughs> Russell ain't going. There. <laughs> He'll be our quarterback. No, Russell was not going to Wowie horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, anyways, before we we'll be uh, a, we'll be the top team next year. <laughs> no, at least in the end. Yeah, that's our show. This is Dynasty Pylon, and uh, good morning, good evening, good night, wherever the hell you're at. Stay safe, and we will catch you next week here at the Dynasty Pylon.